starting in five, four, three. Hey, everybody, it's Friday, and I'm not going to put the music on the YouTube version. Sorry, everybody. I just don't have that ready to go, Aww. but Sean will do it for the podcast version later. Yeah. I, 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 mean, I, might, I could probably get it going if we really wanted to, but I'm, not, I'm just not going to make it what happen. What if we all just did it right now? Yeah, go for na, it. Na, na, na. Uh, sounded like my sounded like uh this is bombcast revengeance uh episode 835 there's been 834 bombcast revengeances before this don't check my numbers <laughs> <Amazing. there. laughs> uh-huh we did it um and uh, this week we got plenty to talk about we're gonna do our most anticipated game anticipated games left for the rest of this year last week we did hey our favorite games of the year so far so we figured let's look at what's left there's not a ton but we found some that we'll talk about here in a minute uh we'll talk about games uh but first we just got that streaming fallout uh that was a lot of fun uh mm -hmm. for a uh, upf uh mike you got to mess around with some mods tell me for shoot was was like did it pique your interest at all for mods in any real oh, way no it was fun to do that but no i'm still very much with these bethesda games like i, I know for some people that is like the thing I remember, like with Starfield, like, well, wait for the mods, wait for mods. It's like I don't, no, I don't really care about yeah, any of these so. mods. I did yeah. when it's just like, like we're gonna make a texture slightly better. I, I don't care, and it was like real goofy, like, like the uh, the Macho Man thing was really funny. I get almost the same effect watching a YouTube video. Of, yeah, like, of course. Like the, yeah. the Macho Man Dragon, right? I saw that in Skyrim yeah. in a video, yep. and that was good for me. I didn't need to go install the mod and then like have it happen to me for real. Yes, I, I know exactly what you mean. And, th and those like those joke mods, they're funny the first couple of times, and then it's like, well, yeah. I'm just playing the game now. Absolutely. Um, I did see there uh, are performance mods though that yes. are a completely different stories. Oh, I that's, what, that's why I, I didn't mods. install like yeah, yeah like when uh because Starfield didn't have DLSS, so the one that like. Yeah. turned fsr into dlss like that's that's kind of thing i'll use yeah. well, like, like yeah with starfield it would be mods for like that and like a mod to add a map into the game yeah. like, right? <laughs> basic like, functionality like, yeah, yeah. For, for fallout 4 and skyrim it's like we're gonna do fun stuff for stuff it's like how about some yeah like features that make the game what if it was okay. fun yeah well, yeah. I, I mean, what we fixed that is the video I just uh, the Nakey Jakey on YouTube did that like great breakdown of Red Dead Redemption 2. And then he just went back to it recently. And he's like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've re reconsidered it. And mostly because it came out on PC and I, in I installed a bunch of mods. And I'm like, OK, yeah. I bet if I installed a bunch of mods into Red Dead Redemption 2, I could have a pretty good time with what they made there. Um, and that's that is the kind of game where I am. So I'll, I'll keep doing mods. But I can see that because like that game more so than even like a Bethesda game. It is kind of hard to to veer off from that story past sometimes if you kind of mod red Dead redemption 2 to be more right of this like pure open world open just you are a cowboy the one that really piqued thing. my interest there is exactly that mike where it's um the bank robberies work the way you expect them to instead of being like scripted sequences no it's like now yeah. i can just go do my mo my own emergent bank robbery i'm like okay yes i would install that and i would have a very good time with that so yeah um i don't know we, we, you guys have, have anything else going on this week uh how's everyone doing um i am like beat i'm dead tired not getting enough yeah. sleep i'm like what so ready we for the weekend do this week i don't I, like, remember. can't remember the past three days uh, it's been really definitely, long though definitely more gamera did we ever upload the other half of that when we did our playstation uh, I did. Uh, don't worry. I, I thought Sean did. I thought I saw it up there. Sean yeah. I, I'm not yeah. gonna remember to build my time for it if I don't see a YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna upload that. a five-hour video for some reason, Mike. Who can say? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I don't. Know. I worked a lot this week. I did. I mean, you know, yeah. it's this kind of work and like you know norm, normal job work. So it's not like I'm you know in the steel mill or something. But still, it was a lot of work. I'm a little mentally drained. Um. I. I kind of want to watch some TV shows, and that's fucked up for me. Yeah. I never do. But, like, X-Men 97 looks amazing, and people like the Fallout show. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, there's time in my life where I did really like Fallout, and it'd be kind of fun to get back into that. So maybe I'll do X-Men first, because that's, you know, 30-minute episodes. Or not, it's not all out. I'll catch up on that. Yeah. And maybe I'll check out Fallout. Who knows? I'm yeah. I'm kind of in the I think I'm gonna check out Fallout Camp now. And people are getting excited about it. I, I mean, honestly, just seeing you play, I'm like, oh, I like Fallout enough, and I bet that show will just amp amplify that feeling. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I do kind of want to play Fallout, not not four up. Uh, what I really want maybe <laughs> is to watch Jeff 
play uh, New Vegas. New Vegas, finally. that's the one I want to yeah. play too. Yes. Or I kind of oh, like you haven't played it? No, I've never no, played he it. Hasn't. I, I started oh. it a couple of times. I'm, I'm not, I haven't really played it. That's okay. why he likes Fallout 4. Is I'm always missing. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> but I, well, I, I, I do kind of want to like go back to Fallout 76 and see what that's like now. I haven't played it since it was new and bad. Yeah, I, I think yeah. Um, Fallout There's 76. There's guys in it now. Yeah, yeah they, they put human beings in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy. God, that, was, that was a whole update, wasn't it? It's like, there's, yeah, there's people. There's we put people, people, people in the game. Yeah, because every yeah. other quest we got from a computer. Yeah, we yeah. were um we were in that meeting earlier this week where we're like figuring out stuff, and it's like the reason we did this Fallout stream, just like a little peek behind the the curtain here, is like, hey, you know, we, we're trying to see if we do these big uh, events where everyone was working together, kind of doing something similar for when there are big things coming out. So the Fallout TV show is here. Let's do this as a test. And it's like, yeah, we'll we'll see how it works, but like we'll do something with that. Maybe we should play Fallout seventy six. And at that time, I was like, is everyone going to be around for that? That would be something fun to do. So instead, we did the mod thing, but. Hey, next week, people are still going to care about Fallout. I would like to play Fallout it's 76, true. so maybe we could do that on the website next week. We'll see. That'd be cool. Yeah, I think yeah. that'd be very cool. Uh, although I wonder, is that the kind of game where we can dip in for an hour and a half to two hours and get something out of it or not? I hope so. I do re- definitely not. Mm, I recall even back then that the intro stuff wasn't too bad, actually. Like, you kind of got okay. out in the world relatively quick. I might be misremembering. And again very different game now so who knows how much yeah. other shit that it throws at you at this point maybe we just have to like do a tutorial before the stream or yeah, something. Before the yeah i just think I maybe I'll, I, it seems like the kind of game that would be fun to dip in on my steam deck to like get started and then we get on the pc and sure. play together that could be cool yeah uh all right you know what let's talk about video games the eclipse sorry was this week that's crazy oh yeah you, uh, back now. You're right. uh, so that's the wait oh i was like you mean last weekend no that's what that was during a weekday yeah that was monday, monday. that was monday yeah, yeah. that was <laughs> this <hell>? monday <laughs> um what, what yeah what did you all do for the eclipse did you uh did you guys tra- travel i know mike i know you traveled into the zone of totality yeah yeah i just had to like drive like 30 minutes to get into totality so i did that with my brothers and their family so uh, we went to like a place. Uh, there was an old car factory here that's been shut down for a while. There's like something there, but basically a big empty parking lot. And the local university's astronomy department was there, kind of like they had some telescopes and they were talking about what's going on. So it was neat because, you know, there were like a lot of people, but we also had our own space. The kids mm-hmm. were there and they were, you know, uh, relatively into it. There were definitely stretches where they got bored. But like once totality happened, everybody was just completely stunned. It was so mm-hmm. worth uh, it to like get actually in totality that was uh stark that was dramatic yep i was mesmerized by it for sure um all right uh i played a game uh tales of kinzera zao um nice yeah the preview embargo is up and i so i'll just kind of talk about like my my initial reaction to it which is maybe jan wasn't lying it feels really good i I, and sometimes Mm -hmm. i'm like Okay, so it has the things you expect from a Metroidvania movement uh, like library where you can pull from, okay, I could do the double jump and I have a dash and I think the double jump feels pretty good. I think the dash might actually feel better than the dash in um, Prince of Persia of the Lost Crown, which Ooh. surprises me. Mm. So it's like, okay, so they, they have like some good juice in the way you move around in, the, in this game. The thing I'm, I'm imagining probably, you know, early on, I'm not sure if it's gonna uh, get more complex than this or sort of um, challenge me more. I don't think the combat's going to be quite as good as it was in Lost Crown, but it's well, definitely in that zone of it being good enough. And I think uh, having the option of being able to switch between the masks of, so if people don't know, it is a Metroidvania. It does look a lot like the Lost Crown, but it has both melee and uh, and uh, uh, you know a, a gun that you can shoot by switching these mm-hmm. masks. Yeah. And and the gun's like you know a little pea shooter, and that feels pretty cool. And then you could switch over this other mask where you can get into to someone's ass and just like actually tear them up with the the heavy and the light attack, like a lot of combat games. And I'm like I'm having a good time when I'm doing that stuff, but really it is all about getting around this world, exploring, uh, seeing, uh, finding puzzles, being like okay, I'm gonna be able to solve that eventually. Uh, like l- l- keeping that in the back of the head and then exploring some more, just like a good Metroidvania. And I'm I'm pretty impressed by it. I think the um, Afrofuturism style doesn't feel like it is uh, like too rote at this point where it's like, oh, it's just mm-hmm. pulling from everything, uh, everything else that's done that before. It's like, no, it's got its own way of approaching that. And at the same time does have like, oh, there's some cool purple lighting, like I imagine in Black Panther or whatever. And I'm yeah. I'm down with that. I'm I'm enjoying that quite a bit. And then I uh, I'm playing with um, 
I'm not gonna be able to remember the the, the language, but I'm playing in the in the African language, and then uh, I hear or I read the English subtitles, and that's pretty cool. It's setting a tone as well, um, and I'm just yeah, I'm, I think they've done a very good job here for especially a game that I was like. I kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, I've seen it in a couple of things now, but I could see why EA was like, hey, this is this would be a good fit for EA Originals. It does yeah, feel like it's good. of that yeah. quality, like of, of something Swah- like it takes two. Swahili or is it something else? I don't think it's Swahili. That's right. If it was Swahili, I would have remembered it, but I don't think it is. Um, I can check it. I can okay. find my yeah. Steam Deck here. I in definitely a am curious to check it out. I mean, I'm not surprised here that it's combat's not as good as Lost Crown. Uh, I don't think any 2D game has combat as good as The Lost Crown. Right, which so is why I'm trying to be like, it's not that good, as it's not as good as that, and yet it's also still very fun, very engaging, right. and I'm enjoying it. Yeah, right, there's also and- the question of, like, is, is the combat going to be different because you have ranged options, which is de-emphasized in Prince of Perch, I would say. Yes. yes. Yeah, you have, like, yeah. your little bow and arrow, but it's not much. So, yeah, absolutely. Like, if you kind of mix it up a bit, that'll work fine. And the fact that to hear that, like, the platforming, which is another, like, important component, does feel good. It is, it is slightly per steam, per, per steam. Okay, I didn't, it wasn't spelled the way you're spelling it, Arwools, so I, I, that's why I didn't think it was Swahili. Okay, cool. Um... Yeah, it's uh, it is um, a game that I think is probably going to be right there in that pantheon of cool modern Metroidvania games, just based on mm-hmm. what I played so far, uh, and that is very exciting. The fact that we're like just kind of getting all of these back to back now. Um, I'm just I'll I'll be interested to see how they sort of get across the story if that can maintain a certain level of engagement from me throughout, which is not a guarantee. It's also not sort of a deal breaker if it doesn't. Uh, but you know, we'll, we'll see they, the, the way that they're delivering it so far is we're stopping the game. We're having the two uh, little, uh, JPEGs come out and talk to one another. Uh, and like, that's, right. and that, that's fine to a certain extent. I hope there's not too much of that. Uh, I like, you know, I think the peak of storytelling for me in this genre is still Metroid dread where it's like yeah, env- yeah. told environmentally. And then Samus Aaron has one line of dialogue that just rips so hard. And then, and yeah, it's, it's well, two lines technically, two, but yeah. right. Two <laughs> lines. Yes. Uh, and then, and then she becomes a Metroid spoilers. Sorry. I can't help it at this point. Wow. It's been long what? enough. Jesus Christ. That's crazy. <laughs> he, he doesn't even, he doesn't have to. He's just like excited That's to spoil crazy. things. Yeah. It, yeah it, look it at the, look at his face. If, if you haven't, you if you haven't played help. it by now, I, I, you have that's that's your own fault for the at, at this point You're because right. I like I've tried to tell people like, that it's so exciting and hearing the, the phrase she becomes a Metroid what does that mean it still delivers yeah. even if you know that that's okay. fair yes because uh-huh. if you played the last Metroid game before this you know that she she is already a Metroid exactly so, yes yeah. it's a she, thought- yeah yeah uh I like I like Metroidvanias and now I'm thinking about like yeah because that is one thing Lost Crown the storytelling I think was fine for me but. Like Dread, or even games that do have more story, like the Ori games or um, Hollow Knight, I think handle that stuff really well. Yeah. Where Lost mm-hmm. Crown was mostly serviceable in that regard. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to Zao, though. I Like I yeah. mentioned on the Bombcast before, I played that demo, which, uh, by the way, it, that demo is still available over on Steam. I don't know if it would be anywhere else. I haven't checked. But uh, I played during Next Fest, and yeah, they just kept up after that. And so you know, you'll look for it for yourself. I think movement wise, I think. I kind of like it better than Prince of Persia because it feels a little more fluid in how the movement goes. Prince of Persia feels a little stop and go to me. It always feels very good, but it does feel like you sometimes have to stop to use an ability right. in order to like traverse something. Sure. But I, yeah. I think this this felt a little more. It feels very Metroid Dread in the, yeah, the little I played of it, Grub. So it's yeah, it's I'm, also coming to PlayStation Plus day one. That's right. Oh, right. Yeah. cool. Nice. I don't know what nice. tier it is. I, but. I think it is just the base tier. I think it's like one of those games. How many tiers are there the these days? I don't know. There's, There's three. three. There's three, and you never know when, if a game's yeah. launching PS Plus, which one you need. It's always very weird, but, but that yeah, is cool. uh, come out end of the month. I'm looking forward to that Yeah, one. and uh, I'll be playing more of it, and once we could like talk about it uh, in a larger capacity, and I've played a lot more, we'll revisit that on a bomb cast for sure. I think, um, I think Dan's playing it as well. I'll see if we can get a couple more codes for everybody so everyone else can jump in if they cool. want. Uh, yeah. Anyone else playing anything? Well, in a similar vein, I did play the Rogue Prince of Persia, the uh, new yeah. roguelike take on the series. I got to play kind of an early preview um, from from Ubisoft here. I got to play for about an hour. And it, it's, it's, it is very funny because this is not connected to the Lost Crown in any way, but it is still yeah. like a 2D game with a lot of emphasis on combat 
and platforming. Right. So it and it still feels good. It still feels really good, but it is a bit different. You know, you you know, you 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 can get different weapons, right? So you start off with I think the daggers, but you could get a saber or even a big axe, and they all sort of work differently. And then there's all the roguelike stuff where like yeah, like the levels are gonna be different. You still can find like challenge rooms where you have very bespoke platforming challenges that feel really good. The the best thing is the way that they incorporate wall running into this whereas in, in lost crown the wall running was basically just an air dash here you actually do run on a wall if it is in the background and usually there is a wall in the mm-hmm. background but it's not just a, a horizontal thing you could run up it vertically for a bit or diagonally so you, it's very cool. versatile how you can move around with that and when you are sort of chained together like a double jump into a wall run into you know a, a, a wall jump and all this other stuff it feels very nice um, so yeah, I think it's incredibly promising already from from what I play. I think it might have a similar like story thing where it's like, yeah, there's some story here. Uh, it's not sure. the same story. It's not the same stuff, but it's like you know, it's like Jeff said, the the, the JPEGs talking at each other yeah. kind <laughs> of thing again. Which whatever, that's that's uh, fine. I think the art style is like going to be divisive. I like I it. I love it, it. I think it, it looks, looks like very neat. Yeah, it's the yeah, it's that unshaded uh, yeah, kind of right. uh, look, which. Uh, I think throws some people off. I, I think, I'm into I don't, I think it. that Get unshaded part is nerds. Yeah, I think that, I think that people mostly are down with that. I think it's it is the like you said the Dan Riker thing of the animation. I think people until they play it and have their hands on it are like, what, why is this rotoscoping look so like smooth or whatever? And they they do think of the new grounds. Smooth. And it's like yeah. uh, I, that is that's part of the Prince of Persia legacy. So I think that I for yeah, me right. it pops off in a way that is very positive. Right, like to me, it immediately read as, "Oh, this is an homage, like the original, like Prince of Persia's, which mm-hmm, didn't right. very much have that rotoscope look to all those cinematic uh, platformers did." Yeah, I, um, yeah, I'm into I, it. I think, I think, I think that look is very cool too, because then it does make it feel distinct from the Lost Crown, whereas Lost Crown is very much Ubisoft making a modern game and modern take on that formula. This, like you said, feels like an homage. And I think there's a space for both of them as a result. I think that's very cool. Right. Also, I want to say, um. I did end up watching the uh, the Triple I Initiative uh, thing that they did yeah. afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't, we didn't have the time to watch it here on the site, but uh, some cool announcements in there. Um, like I saw what uh, one that people have talked about before, but uh, Gestalt's Demon Cinders, just like a pixel or I probably Metroidvania thing that looks cool. But uh, the reveal trailer for this for the Rogue Prince of Persia, I thought was very cool. Oh, it owned. Um, I usually I usually don't like when. Uh, there's a very like animated trailer that often looks like it has kind of nothing to do with the game, but the fact sure. that it was in the art style of the game and then seamlessly transitioned yeah, into transition gameplay, was cool. super sick. That was so sick. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm I I didn't know in screenshots if I would like the uh, this art style, but in motion, I think it looks very nice. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. Um, and then anyone else have any time for anything else new? We played um, Hell Divers. Yeah, I won't dwell on this one too much, but well, we played Hell Divers and I played Hell Divers. Actually, I don't know if Nikki did for the first time, but I played. No, it it, first I time. literally I played the tutorial and then I did one mission by myself. So like this, when we did the stream this week, that was the first time I'd like played the game for real. Um, All right, cool. So yeah, you yeah. can speak to this too. How, how'd you find uh, it? Freaking blast. Okay, so, yeah, it was a really <laughs> it's fun. Like, it's so uh, much fun. T- yeah, to make sure that I was like ready for the stream and got over any tutorial stuff or anything, I uh, that was my game night with the boys this week. Was you know we did our usual Tekken session, but then we just played Hell Divers two until you know it's time to log off, and uh, we did the tutorial together. We were just and that, know, instantly that, that, we real were... quick that that involved you having to be like spend some money on this game, right? They had to like go buy the game. Yeah, uh, it it was on sale uh, okay. right now. So oh, that's it, good. It was even more reasonable. It was like thirty bucks. Oh, that's so great. they were okay. like, yeah. And, and like I mentioned, one of them bought directly on Steam because he was like, all right, well, if we spend like an hour and a half, I, I am I am in the refund window if I want to, and he did because yeah. we had such such a fun time. See, yeah, that's what's one. Um, that's very cool. Yeah. Uh. So starting out though, like we were just on a Discord call doing the tutorial, and everyone was just cracking up at uh the opening, the tutorial where mm-hmm. it's just like, oh, the, yeah, this is very like super troopers or whatever, just very over the top like military stuff. It's very funny. And then when we got in, it was nice going back to a co op shooter like this yeah. and just uh, co- going out, accomplishing missions together, and having silly moments happen. Uh, this, this happened in our stream as well here on the site. But I, I just saw this thing on the ground. I'm like, 
is that mine as my friend walks right into it and goes flying <laughs> those, those types of moments are so good in this game i love what happens it's just like yeah. in, in the first one i brought up when um like mike got squished by something dropping you know that that kind of stuff still happens despite the different um play style and camera angle and everything all that emergent stuff is still in there i think it's just a very fun time yeah i also think it like it does so much um aesthetically yes like the the parody like nash like nationalistic jingoistic yeah. stuff that it does yes is good but i think it plays the presentation of it so seriously and so well that like when you are on the planet and then they you are like actively in combat with these things it feels um like atmospherically it feels correct it feels yeah right like the the red and i feel like you all have talked about this before but like the red lasers that are firing across the screen and the fog that happens on the automaton planets it feels very different and very uh synthetic compared to like the greens and the browns that take place on like all of the bug planets and like there it does feel distinct and different even though the thing that you are fundamentally doing is still holding right trigger and pressing on the d-pad sometimes yeah um it's good like i think it's really good i also like this was the first game where i felt like the the because i was playing on ps5 mm -hmm. i felt like the dual sense was actually doing something interesting since oh. i played astro's playroom um and that was nice to well, feel like justified in so that. I was playing on PC with an Xbox controller. What yeah. what does the dual sense so do over it's there? Got, it's got the it's got the trigger stuff, which I think is actually cool. Like I like the adaptive trigger stuff. Me, me too, um, Nikki. Yeah, adaptive yeah. trigger defenders. Let's go. Yeah, I think I think, I think, I think most really people cool. around here are. It's mostly me who's the hater with my arthritic <laughs> hands. And oh, Jeff doesn't yeah, like him either. Sure. Uh, I don't think they don't don't like him. I just don't think I don't. I don't they don't work in most games or they don't it doesn't make a difference in most games. yeah that's, that's all that's the thing like it doesn't it doesn't i don't have mine turned so, off i use mine all the time yeah yeah it, right. but it like as you get as you empty the clip the there's like less resistance on the right trigger when you bottom out and the clip is empty it feels different um mm -hmm. it like not every game is i think built for adaptive triggers because it is right. making your yeah. fingers work at a, a rate that is like Right, like not someone, no, not a lot of chess says it tires your hands out in Call of Duty, right? Like you would just yeah, turn it exactly. off in that right. case, of course. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, I definitely did have a thing in uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. They have like um a uh, a pull up mini game, right? Dude, and yeah, you're doing the adaptive triggers, and it's it's the, yeah, like oh, there's more resistance the more tired you get, but like the hardest difficulty of that is very difficult, yeah. and it just yeah. makes it significantly easier to turn off the adaptive yeah. triggers for a second, yes. so you can Correct. actually beat that mini game. Yeah, mm -hmm. as a piece of technology, I think it's really sick. It is nuts that that is the only thing I can like point to that the PlayStation Four could not do. You yeah. know? Um, yeah. I think I think both these console uh, people are gonna have to try to figure out so maybe slightly more enticing features for their next yeah. systems than the kind Good of vibration. You know, like, play, like, play, yeah, like play five. <laughs> we have a built-in hit system and like yeah. pretending like that was a really big deal and then never talking about it again once the console launches. Like, yeah, they're gonna have to figure some stuff out. Yeah, yeah that's like when we did BCR earlier in the year about our um year in preview, talking about mm -hmm. what we were excited for and everything. That's why we said that like a PlayStation may have been the least interesting because they just have a console and it's a good console overall, but it is still just that console. It's, it's exactly what you like, know it is. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's what you're expecting. The switch is interesting because of the handheld factor. PC is always interesting. Xbox may move in a different direction than what they have right now. And that's interesting. So, you know, the console has a place, but it's just, it's not interesting in the way that it used to be. And I think, uh, now everyone having access to things like a super fast SSD and yeah, a, that's know, at least better yeah, like, processor being able to can, do all this decompression or anything. Yeah, they, yeah, they're having what we've had PC for a long time now. I think that's great. For sure. Yeah, the consistency, I will say, the consistency of playing video games on the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 is leads 
ahead of the PlayStation 4. Yeah, I mean, the PlayStation Xbox 4 had a plan. laptop hard drive in it. Basically, yeah, it was exactly. yeah, netbook CPU. Yeah, like, it was awful, bad. like awful stuff. So, like from a, will the game run reliably? You can be like, yeah, and it'll run pretty good. Um, so for sure. But yeah, hey, I'll uh, ever see a good video game. Hey, Sean, Definitely. do you see Midori's uh, uh famed Persona slash Sega leaker Midori is saying that yeah. Persona One and Two remakes are coming. Oh, oh later, okay. maybe like step back from like remake, remake, like some kind of updated form of Persona One and Two. Interesting. Which, okay, because we heard from I think someone other than Midori, which is why it's like you know people right, don't take uncertain. it with as much seriousness that uh, two and four <laughs> were like lined up. So it yeah, sounds well, like I, at the very least two would be the one that's considered. I bet they are all going to get that treatment eventually. I mean, four yeah. is absolutely going to happen, but one and two is interesting because. Those games do not play much like the Persona 3, 4, 5 formula at They're all. They're basically just different games. Like, they are to Persona yeah, almost different. what SMT is to Persona. They're right. so different. And I mean, it is like you have, like, high school students, and, right. like, that's kind of it. Because it's more recruiting. It's kind of more of, like, a... What I remember, it's, like, kind of more grid-based placement stuff matters combat. It's real yeah. weird and different. You don't have social links. You don't have the calendar, I think. The yeah, fact that it's a first-person dungeon crawler is... Right. Like, yeah. all, like, all those games where it's a lot more like the old-school SMT like games. You have the actual, yeah. like, demon negotiating and all that stuff, too. So, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just impressed you guys went did. this long without talking about the colors. Uh, Persona 1 yeah, and 2 did, don't... Uh, do they have they, colors? They didn't really do that thing. No colors. It's a black and white video game. Yeah, that's the weird thing about Persona. Like... You know, it's kind of like Street Fighter 2, how Street Fighter 2 is kind of the first one. Like, no disrespect yeah. Persona 1 and 2. They are good. But, like, when I think talking about how I really like Persona, what I mean is, like, that series that started with Persona 3. That's what yes. I really like. For sure. Yes, overwhelmingly, that's where Persona, as most of us like yeah. it, started. So we kind of just, yeah. 1 and 2, 1 and 2 deserves some sort of update, though, just to bring it into, uh, you know, into play with everything else. Uh, Nikki Grace and GiantBomb.com. Uh, hi, yeah, Nikki Grace and GiantBomb.com. Uh, folks in chat are saying that <laughs> uh, Hitler is in Persona 2. Yeah, that's why Jeff yeah. likes it so much. Yes, I what? believe that's still uh, Jeff Drove's pinned tweet. If you go like, to Korea, Yeah, Hitler's my pinned tweet. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think the soul of Hitler is involved in yeah. Persona 2, yeah. Yeah, they bring up Hitler, and they're sorry about it. Is, yeah, okay. Is, yeah, I I don't want to say too much, because I'm trying to think of yeah, no what spoilers. would be yeah, for to sure, say. For sure, <laughs> well, for that sure. too. But yeah, there is just a uh, a character, not named Hitler, named something else, who is just Hitler, and I believe he's a boss character. He's a yokai. You can capture him and make him fight other yokai. There you go. Oh. Oh, well, good for him. You know so much about me, Jeff. <laughs> there's, there's, there's every all these things. Yeah, nailing it. Remember, oh. was, was that Persona 2 when they were trying to like just name that series Revelations in the U.S. for a little bit? That was the first one. That, the first one was Revelations Persona. Like, yeah, that's and then right. yeah, it was uh, Persona 2. And then here in the West, my understanding is this was never the case over in Japan. They call it Shin Megami Tensei Persona. That was specifically uh, mm -hmm. right. Rounds, I remember seeing was, that that what? naming. And, yeah, it up. which is weird because they like thought that we really loved SMT after I mean, Nocturne was on PS2. <laughs> yeah, I guess I, well, at that time they did localize a good amount of uh, SMT games on PS2. You had yeah. Nocturne and the, uh, the, the 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 action based ones in Digital Devil Saga. So like, we, yeah. I guess there were a few of them. So they invested in that name. Uh, but yeah, Persona became so much bigger than that. I'm uh, I'm looking at a Reddit thread and they're like. They are kind of trying to force the coloring scheme onto the first two games. Like the first one's kind of white and gray, nah. and the second one's red and black. Yeah. And then, but Persona Five is red and black also. So yeah, yeah they just weren't doing yeah. that. Yeah. What is Persona no, Two weren't. Innocent Sin? Is that like so? A, there are some... two Persona Two games, and they're basically yeah. like part one and part two. We only got part one in the U.S. Okay. originally, so it was messed yeah. up. Yeah, it's cool. just like a ten, ten, two. Oh, it's like a half. Like oh, I see. Yeah. Um, is Persona as a spinoff? As big as Extreme Makeover Home Edition was <laughs> relative to Extreme Makeover Original. <laughs> Is Extreme uh, Makeover oh. Home Edition on the Mount Rushmore of spin-offs? Of spin-offs. Mm. Real quick, it's more messed up than I thought. We only got part two. <laughs> we oh, didn't oh, that's what I cool. thought. I didn't want to correct you because <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure. Wait, yeah, we only got yeah. a part two? That's it's crazy. Weird. It's got part yeah. two, I guess. Maybe part one had Hitler. Maybe that was one. <laughs> oh, I think that's it. I think that literally is it. Yes. <laughs> it. Mystery solved. <laughs> <laughs> Hitler bugs. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Uh, I think what we're going to do now is we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll talk about our topic for this episode right after this. All right. Do you guys uh, need a break or anything? Are we good to go get right back into no, it? I'm all Gucci. Good, good. Yeah. All right. Thanks, chat. We're going to get right back into it right now then. 2024. It's a year on the calendar, but are there any more video games? Scientists nope. still aren't sure. We're going to do our best to figure it out. Uh, Nikki has their answer. No, there are no, no more games. <laughs> it's over. Games are over. Games <laughs> are over. Uh, okay, so yeah, the reason we're doing this is, like I, like I said at the beginning of the episode, last week we were like, hey, what, what, what are your favorite games of the year so far? We all put our list together. It's been a stacked year so far. And then you do look ahead and it's like, okay, things are starting to slow down. But that doesn't mean there's absolutely nothing but then that begs the question what is there uh we're going to do this in a couple of tiers we're going to do our uh, most anticipated game that's announced and has a date then a game that might come out and then a game that is a long shot um there'll be some overlap we'll kind of make it more discussion based uh but yeah where should we start for the game that we're most excited about that definitely has a date does anyone have one they want to throw out i mean it did just have you know that store reveal and a release date out mm -hmm. star wars outlaws is something yeah. that's pretty imminent that i'm thinking uh, about a lot right now yeah same here and i think it looks pretty promising from the trailers uh even the like that reveal trailer from summer game fest last year wherever it was mm -hmm. like this looks pretty solid mm -hmm. i'm pretty down with what massive has done i i thought the division games are a good time uh, i thought that avatar game was really solid all things considered and this looks like they are putting a lot more effort into it so I'm really hopeful, um, and I like a Star Wars games that, that is about the grimy underworld. So, and this is definitely that. Yeah, yeah I got enough Jedi games. Yeah, that's it. yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Like, I feel Just like so far so away. so much of Star Wars is in Marvel's issue too, right? Is oh, we like never saw their... the lightsabers mod that I put in the game in Fallout uh, Four. Darn it! Uh, 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 next time. That's right. We Brad saw it did. loaded. Yeah, yeah, we saw it loaded. Yeah, we saw a sword. I would have assumed that would have been it. But yeah, no. me too. I guess. Um, <laughs> We've, we've had so many canceled like Star Wars games that were trying yeah. to be some kind of underworldy more mm -hmm. right because there was yeah. Star Wars with the numbers whatever 13, that 13, was 13, 13, 13, ragtag 13. 13. Amy Hennig's joint correct that didn't happen I Maybe imagine canceling else. an was, Amy Hennig game so they did it multiple times there, there was a there was another <laughs> yeah. EA game that uh, that I heard about that, that that has been talked about in other places but it was also going to be an underworld game and the people I talked to were like yeah we were going to kind of do this simulation of the galactic economy where you are working as a smuggler and it was going to be kind of like Sid Meier's Pirates the, the Star Wars game I always really wanted so <laughs> be sick. I've been kind of sad ever since then and this this looks kind of like it's going for that vibe um yeah yeah and it, it like it seems like it's approaching these spaces in the way that I want them to be approached which is to say that like I have no interest in kind of being on a big planet that has jack shit on it right I want a mm -hmm. very I want it to be like like shadow boxy like I want it to be very detailed and intentionally designed and I am okay if it is small if you are putting me in a city that feels like it is lived in and people are active in like that is more engaging to me than anything um and i hope to god that there are no jedi in it yeah I, so it's set between empire and, and return of the jedi which is when there would be the fewest jedi just yeah. running well, around they keep finding more they keep, and they keep, more yeah, they keep finding yeah. more and so that is not a promise that there won't be jedi in the no. game yeah i mean how did you guys feel when like the trailer was like it's jabba the hut because even like even that's that, fine like i guess okay. i could give it a little bit but even then i was a little bit like yeah of course i think like jabba being important tracks yeah right like, right. like, like completely makes sense more so than like the godfather it's yes, yeah. right. But that that and I, that's why I'm like I'm down with that a little bit more than I am like Kira from the from Solo, a Star Wars story, yeah, yeah. being like, well, now she's in charge of that gang. We'll bring, oh, okay, that just that feels a little bit more forced, and yet it does make enough sense because she's in charge of this criminal syndicate, and that is one yeah. of the things that you are interacting with commonly in this game. So. I, I, I get it, uh, but if they kind of go above that, and it is, if, like, Luke Skywalker shows up, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm mad. Yeah, like, yeah. legitimately and actually, like, I'm mad if yes. a lightsaber. If I get to hold a lightsaber <laughs> in this game, I'm actually annoyed. 
Yeah. Yeah. How would you stupid. feel if how would you feel if they did a bit where like a lightsaber shows up and they're just like, who, want, who wants? Yeah. What is that thing? Like that? Right. Yeah. yeah who's just, like, toss it's it away. A, this is stupid. Yeah, this is stupid. Give me a blaster. <laughs> I have a gun that shoots uh, lightsabers. <laughs> I, I that'd be a good bit. That'd be good. Yeah. If, yeah. if you, you found it and you're like, oh man, this is gonna be worth so much when I fence it, and they're like, nobody wants yeah. these. These. This is trash. Yeah. Get it out of yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. All right. All right. Uh, let's keep it moving. Then, uh, who's got the next game? That's me, baby. NCAA football 25. Yeah. Let's yeah. Go. <laughs> Return to form. Um, it's really weird. I hadn't played a Madden game in a few years. Um, and right before the Super Bowl, I downloaded the game on the free trial and I did an entire season, like a create a character season. Oh. And I had a blast. Like, I think Matt, like, if as a person who is not really looking at Madden uh, for a simulation situation, I'm looking for some time in between or something in between like an arcade experience like an nfl blitz but i do want a little i want more plays right like i do want to be able to do motion offense and move my guys around and that kind of stuff and like getting get out 25 minutes you play a game of madden fucking ruled like i thought it felt so good um and the thing that i really liked about the ncaa games in the past is that while the the franchise mode stuff in in the madden games got really boring and stale like i was always looking for like the ability to change the price of popcorn mm -hmm. at my thing because that's like really what i got into when i was playing madden 05 in ncaa because it's a college and like you get and there's so many college football is so fucking weird there's like conferences and alignment and now like there's a transfer portal which did not exist before you're gonna like there are so many silly like institutional things that i hope make their way into playing the game that i'm really excited to play it in franchise mode and like pick a random school and move it from either being like out of conference or like and move it into a conference and yeah. like move it up a division because like those storylines you just can't do in a madden game because everyone's at the same level like i'm really excited mm -hmm. about that from a, from a game play building perspective i'm excited do about you it. expect those those features to be in here from this first yeah, one because i'm I like i'm so. worried about it that they're like kind of like we got the football and yet we have something akin to a transfer protocol uh i'm yeah. just i'm worried about the robustness of it you're, you're, you're confident so i'm confident because it's like a little bit what the fuck are you doing yeah otherwise honestly like and i considering it is just going to be the madden engine slightly tweaked a little bit like if if they haven't been building this these mechanics i like really don't know what they've been working yeah, that, on that's the frustrating thing i hear i hear about development is that they don't want this to be last year's madden reskinned they yeah. want this kind of stand to stand on its own i'm like it's okay if it's last year's madden reskinned as long as you have all the right college football accoutrement yes. on top of it Absolutely. that's all we really need mm -hmm. so focus on that but I guess make it a very good, fun to play football game will be key as well. It's um, huge. When is that coming out? Because I was—I meant to say this: uh, Star Wars Outlaws out August thirtieth. Uh, when is this out? I think also August. I will look it up. NCAA. That, right. that would be football. the right timing for the football season. Yeah. Twenty-five. They haven't shown any gameplay from that game, which is oh, nuts right. Either. I think the, I think they, um, the last time they talked about it, I think they said they would show it off in the next couple of months. Um, yeah. So yeah. We'll get to see uh, it I don't think it has okay. an official date yet. That's, they'll actually. probably do all of that at the same time then. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, Mikey, is it going to be an MMO year for you? It kind of is. I think it's going to be a big MMO year, which is a good thing to have in what might be a lighter year. Because, yeah, this uh, summer, uh, I got to look that up, uh, is Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail. So next expansion for that, this one is going to kind of have some some tropical uh, vacation vibes to it, which I think is going to be really exciting. It's also the start of a new storyline, um, the kind of storyline yeah. that did start with A Realm Reborn, even a bit in like the original Final Fantasy fourteen, had its big finale with the last expansion and Walker. So like, I think everyone's kind of expecting Don Cho to start off real light and fun, but then there's going to be stuff happening that's going to kind of lead us to like another really big 10 year story arc. Um, and, you know, we have new jobs. I think Pictomancer looks really neat. It's uh, like a, an, an artist who uses a magic paintbrush to murder people. Mm, like Epic Mickey. <laughs> like Epic Mickey. Yeah, which, hey, that's coming up, too. So I'm really looking forward to try that out. Final Fantasy XIV has just been so good 
for a while now. Any new content of that, I am looking forward to. But then, yeah, like later this year, it doesn't have an exact release date yet. But World of Warcraft: The War Within is going to come out, and but World of Warcraft in general is just kind of popping off real hard right now. They added uh, a, a a battle royale mode that people like. What uh, Cataclysm Classic <laughs> is happening? Yeah, and they're like, hold on, we, we are, actually know the correct. Second. You've told me this before, and I meant to be like, wait, what would it take for me to do to play that? Like, could I hop I, right in I, immediately? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if you have to be max level. It's it's. Py I need to check it out myself. Still, it's called Plunderstorm. It's all pirate themed stuff. It's like a yeah. So it's a World of Warcraft pirate themed battle royale. But okay. is it still just World is of Warcraft it, PvP? I, no, I think it's different. Like, I don't think you oh. necessarily take in your class ability. I don't know. I need to try it, but I think people actually like right, trying to say like it. all you need is a sub. It doesn't even use your real characters. Uh, I say, so, yeah, it doesn't use your real characters. So, so. That, that's all you need is a sub, and you can hop right into it, apparently. Okay. Um, Maybe we need to right, check that well. out then. That, yeah. well, that sounds like a wild time. That, if that's <laughs> the first way that I ever play World of Warcraft, that, that oh, would be that ideal. That would be fucking incredible. That's yeah. ideal. Even, like, people are like, you know, I, I, like, I like to peek in at the World of Warcraft subreddit and, you know, for the last decade, it's just people complaining. And I was in there the other day and people are happy. Like people had like the Whoa. meme, like the guy holding like to like getting offered too much stuff. And it was like mm -hmm. all the positive uh, things. Oh, yeah. uh, hell yeah. Good for them. Yeah. Because like there's and like apparently subscriptions are at like a very good point, maybe 7.5 million ish, which is insane. So with everything yeah. else that's like not going great, maybe a blizzard. Um, they're that although in general a lot of things seem to be getting right there because people seem very excited about the new season of Diablo 4 which right. is coming out in like a couple days I kind of want to check that out you know uh, Overwatch 2 is still Overwatch yeah, 2 yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it, <laughs> yeah. you know it could also bounce back uh, Mike you talked about sure. like, uh, the, like people in the Reddit being happy for you though like wow was so like yeah I could put it off to the side and I'll come back to it were you f starting to feel kind of worn down by it as well yeah I mean I definitely was kind of like over it a bit because i had played pretty intensely for a while uh, especially when when uh when warlords of draenor came out which was not a good expansion i did play a lot of it i also played a lot of legion and i even played a good amount of battle for azeroth which is not a liked expansion uh, at all and then after that was shadowlands shadowlands was the low point that was a, just a bad okay expansion. so you had like and, banger after banger of things kind of ruining your experience or like right that you got burned out on at least and, and at that time i at least was playing classic and that was fun but like i was playing classic with people who took classic pretty seriously mm. so for, you know, we're all for that i was just done and final fantasy 14 was there and i was playing a lot of that and it was just more of my speed but now i'm at a point where I almost have like equal amounts of time devoted to both of those games. I could kind of just jump back and forth between them whenever I want to. Uh, Sean, we don't have to go in order. So if you got one on this list you want to bring up, feel free to go for it. No, that's okay. I'll let's just keep going in order. It's cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. The next one we have here is Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, uh, yeah, which I, I, I didn't put on here, but I feel good about it as well. Who, who dropped this one on here? I put it on there. Cool. I am looking forward to this quite a bit. I still like Indiana Jones. Uh, yeah. And I think, honestly, I think the great thing about doing a video game is that we can make kind of the Indiana Jones adventure that you really can't with movies anymore mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons these days. So just like, hey, we're going to make it. Like, because of all the woke game. people in Hollywood. Because of all the woke yeah, people right. in Disney. Yeah, right. absolutely. You got it. Um, I don't know. I, what we've seen so far looks good. And I mean, God, my, you know, the, this developer. Yeah, uh, Machine Games idea. makes good video games. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. just not going to make I a, really, it'd be so yeah. shocking if they made a bad game here. Yeah, and I'm like legitimately excited to see what that like. No, that my favorite part and and maybe this is a mistake in thinking, but my favorite part about Wolf the Wolfenstein, the new Wolfenstein games is that it was entirely unpredictable what the fuck was going right. to happen next and i was like strapped in amped about every single thing that was happening because the writing was so good the pacing was so strong and it felt the stakes all kind of felt legitimate and like indiana jones built in has those stakes right and i'm really i'm just really excited to see what they do with this story um i doubt someone's gonna get beheaded and have their head put on a different body in this one but <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe can say um yeah god I'm, I'm a huge machine games fan i love those wolfenstein games uh and i love indiana jones so yeah that's uh, it's ticking a lot of boxes for me i am like unsure of how this game i mean we, we saw a little bit of it so far and when we do see mm -hmm. it it's like you know what i think this can work 
Uh, mm -hmm. I just uh, the, actually maybe I am worried about the first person perspective a little bit. Where, where oh, I'm like, really? I, okay. I'm, I think I think they can. I you can make a good Indiana Jones game that's first person. It's not that. I think it's them being in a situation where like they want to make the game that they're good at, and then they feel a pressure to do those like third person sections, which they which they also said are in the game because it's like, well, you got to see Indiana Jones, and I'm like, oh, I. If they're feeling that pressure, I wonder if they're just not confident about it or something, and that's what's yeah. maybe betraying it to me a little bit. So, we'll, okay, we'll I'm see. I'm glad you brought that up because I thought you were the other way around, where you were like, ah, shut the hell up, like first person is fine. But I, I mean, I uh, I am outwardly that way. Internally, I'm conflicted though, Sean. So okay, yeah, because okay. <laughs> okay, I'm in the same spot where I'm looking at it, it's like, I mean, they are good at making first person games, and I like you, I I love their first person games. It's just it feels so unnecessary because. If you're obviously if it's what you're good at, that's what you expect the studio to do. But the fact that they are doing the third person segments seems like, well, OK, they're they're programming for this. They're accounting for the third person yeah. stuff. And if people are expecting a third person game at that point, it feels to me like they're almost just doing it in first person to be different. In in addition to the fact that they are good at making those games, that's what they're comfortable with. If you're so looking... I think it's weird. If you're looking for a third person video game where you can be Indiana Jones, let me introduce you I to know. Epic Games is Fortnite. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the curve. I do have Indiana Jones skin in that game. It is very good. I don't know. I'm, I'm not I'm not really worried about any of that. You know what? It, it almost makes me think of Metroid Prime, right? Where like, yeah, yes. sometimes it, it kind of pulls out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I and hope you that's do the exactly what thing, it is. Whatever out. I think that's what's going to feel like. Oh, you're climbing up a ladder. And you're I gonna think. Pull out for that. I think more fall making you not vomit by going in third verse is a yeah, little but, uh, bit different than indie shimming along a ledge, which is something that is in something like Metro Prime. Yeah, I, I, I think the the spirit might be the same, though, and we won't know until we play it. So I, you yeah, know, exactly. once, That's once we're playing it, we All might be like, oh, of course, they had to go third person here. This feels right. I would have made the same choice if I was in their shoes. Um, we'll see. Uh, I'm just yeah. uh I want that game to feel as epic and dramatic and, and uh, theatrical as possible because it is. That's how what, that, those are the things I think of with Indiana Jones. And I'm just not sure until I play it that that's how I'm going to feel. Yeah. Um, all right. A couple more games on our most anticipated announced games. Uh, Avowed. Th this one, is this one actually coming out this year? Or are we on, are... It has a 2024 has... release date. God, I keep forgetting that. Okay. It wow. should be fall 2024. Okay. Now, I think if this was, if this is like the one on this list that's pushed back, I think it'd be the least surprising. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I'm curious about this one. I, this is another one where I really think I have to play it before I really know how yeah, I feel same. about it. When I see it in video, I'm like, I see some elements of like the, you know, the magic hands doing magic stuff that looks somewhat appealing to me. Uh, and then the characters go and talk to one another like they do in Obsidian games. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I hope that system is as deep as it can be in, uh, in other Obsidian games. Uh, but I'm like, okay, I, I think they'll probably nail that moment to moment what am i doing is that fun is that interesting and do i feel good about exploring that world i really have no idea right at this point at this moment yeah yeah i feel pretty confident in obsidian's ability to 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 pull this one off i guess part of me is just a little curious about the scale because i you know i like the outer worlds i want something a little bit bigger than that i really do oh, so outer worlds felt confined yes yeah, it, yeah, it, like um, in in a way that is like kind of the opposite of what I was saying about Star Wars Outlaws, right? Like, yes, the whole thing about the outer worlds. That's right. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing about <laughs> yes. the outer worlds is that it was almost as big as I wanted it to be. Right, but it was not. You you, you just not you see the there. seams in outer worlds yeah. more than you want to. For well, sure. Outer Worlds has that problem that a lot of these sci-fi games have, because it's like, well, you're going to go to these different planets, so things should feel bigger. Yeah. It's just like, here's like four smaller maps instead of one big one, and that always actually feels a lot smaller than just having the one big Skyrim-style map. Right, yeah, so if, maybe if they can I avoid can that problem the, altogether, yeah. Yeah, if I can see the planet on a map, that means you fucked up. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I mean, any other thoughts about Avowed before we move on? I think looked the wands look cool. I like, I like right. things with dual, dual wanding. That's neat. Uh, Stellar Blade. This is a, the one that's coming up at the end of this month. Uh, PlayStation 5 yeah. uh, c combat action game, um, character action game. I am, I, I think I keep getting an urge to go back to this demo, which apparently a lot of people are. The demo like, has a lot of players, apparently. Um, I think this game is going to be pretty solid and a good time. Uh, is everyone still feeling that way after playing the demo or have you not played the demo? What's up? 
Oh yeah, I'm yeah. I put this on here because I am encouraged after the demo. Yeah. It's what I was hoping the game would be. It's not quite a platinum style character action game, but it is in the vein of a more Devil May Cry ish one, uh, with you know shades of Sekiro and stuff like we've discussed before. And I, I'm just really looking forward to this one. Of any game that has like an announced announced release date so far, mm-hmm. this is the one I'm looking forward to the most. And it's also the one of the more recent ones on this list. It comes out in what two weeks. Yep. So I'm I'm looking forward to getting my hands on it because I had a great time with the demo. I think I I think the demo is, you know, it's a vertical slice. So maybe some people were underwhelmed, but not realizing that in these games, the combat only gets better as you unlock stuff. Right. And so right. I'm looking forward to the potential of what this game could end up being. Uh ra- even more so than what we've already seen and played. Yeah, I think the the one thing that worries me is a, a, a me thing, not a game thing, where um, parry windows are something that either click with me or they don't, or they take a long time to click with me sometimes. And it's like, in some games, it's like, this just feels right. Sekiro just felt right. I was able to nail it. And maybe that is a little bit of a game thing. There's, here, I'm like, I'm trying to look at the, the enemies, trying to predict their movements, trying to understand their animations that lead into the parry window. And it's like, ah, oh, that just doesn't feel quite right it did click more and more as i played it so i'm hoping that it will Mm -hmm. will fall into place for real as i'm playing the real game more quickly than it did when i was playing the demo um but other than that it's like yeah yeah other than that it's that's something that for me differentiates it be and what definitively makes a character action game rather than a souls like is the fact that um, souls you tend to like observe the enemy more and like look at their movements and their follow-throughs and everything character action is more about the rhythm and knowing Mm -hmm. like it is my turn. It's still my turn. It's almost the end of my turn. Get ready to parry because then it'll be their turn. They'll toss that mm. attack up and figure yeah. out the rhythm of things. And that's that. That's here, and I'm looking forward to uh, checking that out. Uh, who's excited about PO'd Definitive Edition? I me, Mike. am. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, so PO'd was a 3DO exclusive first-person shooter. It eventually got a PlayStation 1 port, but yeah, this was a 3DO shooter. It never came out to PC. It is very much a shooter uh, from that era. You play as a very angry space uh, chef. He's PO'd, you might say. And yeah, it's just it's just one of those Doom likes, but it was just kind of silly and weird and kind of a product of, of history. Night Dive <laughs> Studios who has done a lot of these first person oh. shooter remasters like Dark Forces recently, all the Turok games, Quake 1 and 2. On April Fool's Day, they announced they were going to do a definitive edition of this. But then, like the day after, they're like, "No, we're serious. This is we're actually happening." It. And nice. I was very <laughs> excited. I have a weird fascination with the 3DO. The fact that this game is going to be like on PC finally, I think that's really neat. Like, it, it, you have a jetpack in this game for some reason. Like, of of all the boomer shooters that are like actual boomer shooters, not modern ones, this is one of the weirder ones. I'm very excited to go back to it. And that's the- fun. And they constantly do great jobs with these with these uh, remasterings, so I'm hopeful. Right, like yeah. one of your like you know, one of your like your first weapons is just like an infinite supply of like bloody butcher knives that you throw at people. Oh, that it's, sounds fantastic. It's gonna be is fun. this does this mean that like well we might not even all be around by then, but like when oh, Sean and I are 48, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> like we're gonna get we're gonna get like amazing island. Like Sega's gonna make an amazing island. HD yeah. re-release. It probably does like, mean that. that what, yes. By night dive. That yeah. what, like, night, yeah. like night dive is going to make a brand new amazing island. Yes. Hell yeah. That's what you're going to get. Sick. Uh, I can't wait. Sounds cool. like a hellscape now, that you're in. I want to say uh, remake. So Pete, games that go I ahead. Sorry, Nick. I was young. Oh, sorry. They haven't remade any of the games that I liked when I was nine. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> so this game doesn't have a release date yet, but I assume it's going to be sometime this year. This is, this is something that's going to take a whole lot of time. Right. <laughs> uh, we missed that. I think Indiana Jones, like the rumor is like December for that. So that's the only yeah. one that has a date that we know about or might know about. Um, all right. Metaphor re This is the yeah. more fantasy take on uh, uh, an RPG from the Persona team, right? Yeah. Fantasy Persona. Correct. Fantasy Persona yeah. is the way to put it. Well, uh, this this team spun off of the Persona team. This is basically the original original ish, you could say, Persona team going off to do a different thing, and then there's a different team that has now taken on Persona over there. Okay, cool. Yeah, it, but, but looking at it, right. looking at it, it's like, yeah, this is something from the the people that make Persona, but fantasy. 
Um, I, yeah. I always thought this game looked really cool uh, when we saw it in the, in the was, was it the Xbox showcase last E3, last summer game fest. Yeah. And they announced this and reload at the same time. Right. And I thought it looked pretty impressive. How are you guys feeling about it as uh, persona fans? Strong. I, I think it looks very good. My, my one thing, and it's a small thing is that I think part of what makes persona interesting is that they made a really cool RPG RPG that isn't fantasy. Like almost all of them are right. Yeah. So like, you know, to be like, hey, let's like do a different setting. Let's just go back to fantasy. It's probably like, oh, OK, but w- whatever, though, they're, they're going to find a ways to make it interesting and to make it distinct. And uh, I guess I'm curious to see like what is different here. Right. Because I think we still have a calendar yeah. system and things like that. It might even still be social links. Right. So it's, yeah. it's a lot of persona stuff in there. I think it will just be Persona, but in a different style of setting, which I'm actually kind of down for because, sure, yeah. I mean, as, as much as other RPGs have been high fantasy before, have we really had a game like Persona in a high fantasy setting where it is mm. so much about uh, that calendar system and, you know, uh, figure out I'm going to do this in the first half of the day, this in the second half of the day, and then form this very structured social link with everyone that feeds back into the gameplay in a tangible way. I know there's so many RPGs have, you know, forming relationships with your traveling companions and everything. Obviously, Bioware is big onto that and stuff like that. But I feel like in, in this specific way, a couple of couple of people pointed out uh, three houses, I guess. But like, sure. yeah. Yeah, th- and also three houses is kind of just persona in some way. So I, I, yeah, I guess you're right that's about a that. Pretty different flavor of fantasy, right? Like almost like more like uh, Alice in Wonderland's almost a little bit. Yeah, if that's and exactly that, right. Yeah, that's the other thing I wanted to point out. It's not exactly high fantasy. It right. is more a. I'm trying to it's think of the right word. Yeah, it's like absurdist or uh, what? What? Trippy. I'm thinking of the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> Those are good words, Mike. But yeah, it's uh, surrealist. That's what I'm trying to think of. It's, it's yeah. a bit yeah. surrealist mixed in with the high fantasy. Uh, Psychedelic is not really one that just came up in chat. That's a good one, too. Where I think it, they're getting a little wild. I think we saw maybe a little bit of um, may, maybe technology in there in almost like a Magitech type of way in the Ooh, initial cool. trailer, which I Ooh. think Jeff might have pulled up here. Um, so I think it's just going to be a different vibe than your typical high fantasy. Yeah, I'm excited. I, I, I again, it just, just looks. It looks like it has. Um, as someone in the chat, I think Warden Cliff mentioned, it has the juice, uh, the menu system, all that stuff, like these games yeah. always yeah. do. Oh yeah, that that the thing that just came up in the trailer was what I was talking about. Like the character has maybe a hoverboard or something like that, or maybe they're just doing magic. Shit. But some, yeah, there's an airship. Like something about this mixture of a little yeah. bit of technology uh, in the vein of some. Uh, Final Fantasies or main Monster Hunter type thing. I think that's very appealing to me um, mixed with the Persona formula. I think it's going to be a really interesting game. And it is still nebulous 2024. I think the last we heard they did say uh, fall of 2024 is the target, but yeah, no exact date just yet, but it's likely coming out what's, this year. I think what's interesting is like you still obviously have like the, the things in your party, but they might not actually be Personas this time. Like we're not like we're not doing it might those be, demons. Yeah. Oh, I think be it might be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stable of people this up. time. Right? So that's interesting. Yeah, they've been working on this for a long time. So I wouldn't be surprised if this like runs deeper. Than right. Because this, just when this kind of was own IP. showed up at Xbox, people were like, oh, that game. And I was like, oh, this is a thing that you guys have known about for a long time. Apparently, they had yeah, talked about um, it before. Project Re-Fantasy. It was announced as in right. like 2015 or wow. something. Yeah, right. Right. They've been cooking. Yeah, uh, you'll get this trailer. I'm like, getting more excited. I mean, these, these people right. make very good games. I'm, I'm pumped for this. It looks high quality. Exactly. Yeah. Um. All right. Last one on the ones that are announced to have a date. Pokemon trading card game pocket. Sean, yeah. talk your shit. <laughs> I'm just excited. I put it on slightly as a joke. But I am legitimately excited because uh, the current Pokemon TCG simulator ain't great, but it's also not very gamified. And I think this is going to fix one of fix both of those problems really and why i'm just more interested in because it's another way for me to play a tcg which i'm always into i play different formats and stuff i'm excited that i think like this is the kind of game where y'all on the call with me here probably like haven't even touched pokemon tcg live but when this trailer came up you know like we were in the call me nikki mike jan we were and I i was like this is the kind of game 
you people might be into but you people <laughs> all y'all you people over there you brain too just because my brain's too small for yeah fun. all y'all like, non-super like, nerds on the fucking board yeah, at the exactly. same time um no yeah i'm fucking amped about this um legitimately and actually i i love to play it there's if there's one thing about me is that i love to play a mobile card game for two and a half months um <laughs> and that was me with marvel snap it was one uh -huh. of the best two and a half months i've ever had on my phone and then uh i'm really excited to play this for also two and a half months it, uh, sean am i showing the yeah. right thing is this the the, the 400 hour board game thing or no no nope, you moron that yeah. is, what is well, it, in my defense Wait, this is sick in my, in my defense it, it's called pokemon trading card game classic not pocket yeah okay, not right, the thing right. that i just put into the chat that you right. could pocket. copy and pasted there it's no. most of the words are the same though is the thing that's the big part of it <laughs> yeah nice weird how a game too. based on this these trading so nice. can uh, they send yeah. us this yeah, yeah. I, would so I know. Yeah, that thing hundred. looked really sick. I wonder if I could make that. Just fast forward to like halfway through a trailer. Kana, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> now, I'll definitely want to check this out. Looks neat. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's okay, I remember this yeah, thing. Like I said, it's a simpler way to play the game, so I think it's gonna be more accessible. Oh, it's got immersive oh, cards. I'm sorry, that's what the trailer said. So uh, they, you know, they, the cards Jeff Grubb is gonna be surrounded by people playing this, oh, and he's I'll gonna be peer pressured. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the peer pressure will get to me. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna get the Pokemon company to send me no the classic thing. And I'm way not gonna this share dude it with is you. Drinking a cup of milk. Wow. I, forgot about that. <laughs> I didn't say anything. You can share it with me. <laughs> okay, sure, sure <laughs> thing, Mike. Um, all right. Okay, so that moves us to our next tier, which are the most anticipated games that we think might come out. Um, this is gonna be a little bit shorter list, but we got like, a number of big ones in here. I do think we should start with Spoon Heaven. Uh, Heaven, oh, yeah. Heaven, or Hollow Knight Silk Song. Um, <laughs> Well, I couldn't even. Right name. Yeah, because it's Spoon Heaven. It is just Spoon Heaven in my brain now at this point. That's all it is. Uh, I believe. I think this game's coming out this year. I think it might even come out soon. I, you know, got those rating things, and that's great because uh, Hollow Knight is such a fantastic game. I, I've kind of had to stop myself from going back to it because it's a very big game, and I just don't really have time to 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 spend playing that right now and not kind of catching up with new releases at the moment but the fact that they have been cooking so long on this if there's ever any thought that this was going to be kind of like like the miles morales style like expand alone thing no this is hollow knight 2 yes, is my yeah. expectations now and i'm pretty sure that is exactly what we're going to get oh just looking at like this trailer here these games look so good and the just watching the specific movement like how um you know you're, the character here has a bit of a different moveset than from the first hollow knight you had this very mm -hmm. specific kind of diagonal downward slash thing that you can use to kind of bounce off enemies oh my gosh this game is looking so gorgeous i just like hollow knight and i've missed it and i can't wait yeah. to go back to that kind of game i love flash animation <laughs> <laughs> i can't believe anybody would look at us wow. and be like eh. Like the way this looks. This that's looks a crazy. That's a crazy so, thing. I, I don't so see it good. actually. I don't. I, see I don't it. even. I, you know, me and Grub, we're, we we don't love Hollow Knight, and even we're like, that's a crazy take. Yeah, I don't. I agree. I don't think that's that. I do not see it when I look at this game for sure. No. Uh, that was never my problem. I don't really have that much of a problem with it. It's just not something you I clicked with. Would, I, there's no way you wouldn't like Hollow Knight. I think, I think you're probably Considering right. Considering all the games that you do like. You literally played Hollow Knight and said, I don't like this, Mike. What more do you want well, from I, I, played, I played like an hour and I said I didn't get it. You I, went back to it. You, I know you're old. You probably don't remember. Don't remember. But you went back to it <laughs> and you were like, yeah, Mike, I'm sorry. I still don't like I just, it. I just you you surprised him and everything. This is... You like the, you like the Castlevania and Metroidvanias. <laughs> this is just that, but better in some ways yeah but it's not yeah, better mm, than not this true. distressed tone in your voice when i don't like yeah. it so, which is actually <laughs> game distressed. of the year um i am very distressed fire emblem genealogy of the holy war remake is this one that game is still fake every yeah. you've been saying this game name in my presence for almost a calendar year now and it's not, <laughs> yeah. like it isn't real like uh, you're did you say that because the, the name of it Yes. Yeah, it's a kind That's of a hell just of a name. the existing name of the game. It, can't, it, <laughs> I, it cannot be the existing name of the game. Okay, yeah. if anyone doesn't know, this is like I, I forget the exact numbering, but it's like Fire Emblem Four or something on the Super or Super Famicom specifically, yeah. and we in the West didn't get Fire Emblem at all until I believe seven or eight on the Game Boy Advance. The game that we just called Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem. The Dome was it wasn't even the first one on the GBA. It was a sequel to an existing GBA one. Yeah, but exactly. This is a game that like you know people talk up, and so naturally it was set to get a remake, and we've been hearing and. 
maybe from a variety of sources that hey this game just exists and they're just sitting on it you know is it yep. is it mechanically interesting or different from them or is it just one that never came out i mean i think it's, it's, it's i think it's very similar to what those games were at that yeah. time which is kind of the the bones of what you get these days but in a remake, I imagine they'll add a lot of kind of the, yeah. the niceties and they, new features. And I mean, the, the three I, houses vibe. Yeah, right. Maybe. they might rename it from Genealogy of Holy War, but this will almost assuredly be Fire Emblem Echoes something. Right. I think the reason why mm. people liked this one specifically uh, from like the 16 bit ones is because it had a, a particularly good story. I see. Yeah. Cool. So. Uh, hey, hey, more Fire Emblem. More oh, Fire yeah. Emblem. And that's, I mean, the Fire Emblem is a, a franchise they rely on uh, consistently. Like, there's no way they're not also, like, they're making a new Fire Emblem for sure. But there's also no way they weren't making something like this, another remake. They're kind of going back and forth sure. with these uh, one after the other. Uh, I like. Hey, I like this one. Jurassic Park Survival. Um, yeah, one, dude. That was, yeah. was that ga- Game of the, Game Awards where it got announced, I think? I think so. Uh, I think so, yeah. And so this is the alien isolation sort of like uh, game that is where you play as a character trying to survive in Jurassic Park, act not Jurassic World, Jurassic Park, uh, where the oh, dinosaurs yeah. have escaped and you need to like yeah, the, just... The power is out. The power is out. And that's what, <laughs> oh, that's God. the most important. It's a power <laughs> restoration uh, simulator. <laughs> um, uh, sh- shout out to the Ben. I'm going to be on uh their trivia tower in like a week and a half everybody so look out oh, for yeah. that um but like that's like just straight up a good idea it takes, that's a, yeah. it's a great idea yeah. take on alien I, isolation I thought, put dinosaurs in there done and i hope it mm-hmm. i hope it comes across the finish line in a really strong way i i think that that trailer looks great uh the aesthetics of dress park one are just so good from like the actual like dinosaur habitats to like the weird kind of like natural history museum meets theme park look of the buildings yeah. and then like the real like you know, like like realistic like infrastructure stuff. That all that stuff just hits for me. And seeing it in this triple A presentation, I was immediately all about this. I think that this is such a fantastic idea. I hope it delivers on that. I think this just doesn't really have a release date yet, so I'm not sure if it is this year. But uh, I'm willing to wait. Whatever it is, I'm excited. Sure. Uh, oh shit! And it's got the door closing tech from the division. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I mean, I get like um, I remember Backlar being like, "Oh, it didn't look good Techno- technologically. Like the frame rates really low in this trailer and stuff like that." But I I think um, yeah. that stuff that will it's get gonna be up. dark anyway. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're not gonna see those frames. It is uh, who is making it? I can't remember. Oh, Saber, uh, right? Saber, Saber. Saber okay. Yeah. So I'm hopeful. I'm very hopeful. Uh, all right. What do we have next? Uh, Zenless Zone Zero. Who's the uh, freak for this one? Oh, you know who the freak is for this one. <laughs> So this is that, uh this is Mihoyo. So this yeah. is Mihoyo's next game. Yes. And they have a tendency to take something that someone else did and put their own spin on. You know, Genshin was obviously Genshin Impact looked like uh Breath of the Wild in many ways, but it was sort of like an open world RPG. And then Honkai Star Rail is their take on uh Persona, very mm-hmm. obviously. Zenless Zone Zero is this game that is a character action game. Allegedly, I don't know. I don't know if this game is real. <laughs> This is wild. I followed people their Twitter have played account. It. Yeah, people have played it. It's been at events. It was at PAX East. And like this game exists in some form, but they keep just not giving us a date and everything. It's very odd. But I don't know. Like I've mentioned, character action games are so few and far between. That anytime we get one that looks solid, I, I pop off. And you look at this one, like the anime, like cell shaded ish mm-hmm. style that's going for and everything. It just looks cool. And that's the sort of over over the top silliness you want in a character action game. Right. So I think you want to play as the maid girl or the, the big actual bear person in a suit. <laughs> I, I, I think he's a wolf. I don't know. The characters are wild. Oh, trust me. Game. There's an actual, there's a, there's a wolf, but there is also an actual uh, bear. And you uh, okay, said, you said the maid girl. There are three maid girls. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, I, get it I, right. I, Mike. More specific. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I but, really man. just, my, I just, I wish this was just going to be a regular video game though like like yeah. i have i have such a an antithetical stance on the way that they monetize these video games yeah i know that i can't i can't even get started on them so like if it was 60 dollars and then i didn't have to pay anything yeah but they're they make so much money right it's it's out awesome. of the tube yeah, yeah. we're, we're yeah, not getting exactly. that we're not getting that it's back. not gonna be that which yeah. is a bummer so I just won't I touch it. I'll look at it from afar. I, and I'll, I'll read a story that's like, 
I bet my whole house and my kids Porsche on this. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. I, I, I hate that. that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I hate that they're gotcha games because I, I know Mike's the same way where it's like, oh, gotcha. Therefore, I won't play it. Probably. But I, I can't emphasize emphasize this enough. You just never have to touch that stuff. You never have to touch yeah. that stuff. This even like you have to go out of your way a little bit to see it. But I understand people being like, but I know it's there and it's yeah. like it's on the I, menu. I'm not just not even, gonna, like avert it's not my even eyes. Necessarily that, but like, but it's also the scumbaggery I know of it all. It's well, like it's, I, not, even, I it's that. not even that. Like it's say the like no. Honkai Star Rail. I just don't want that kind of game to be a live service game. I want that to be something where it's like, okay, I know like where the end is sure this, oh, and then i okay. beat it and i move on i mean think life. about so like that persona there's a persona mobile game right that's very similar yeah. to these that's mobile about, yeah. Yeah, okay, i'm sorry yeah i was getting real right okay is yeah. that what that is okay and, and yeah. it it like would you guys really want that but it's like the literal of, persona game coming out yeah yeah i mean literally and, persona oh branded. you mean persona 5x yes persona yeah, 5 yes exactly and that that is going to be okay. live servicey right and it's gonna not, not gonna have yeah, an yeah, ending no it's gonna be like one of well yeah that's not interested in it right yeah yeah and yeah, that's yeah. the thing. I have no problem with because I'm like, there's just going to be a story there that I'm going to play. It's a canon Persona story. It's going to play like Persona. And like, sure, the story is coming out in chapters. Effectively, what's going to happen? Like, One day, like, your I'm heart will also harden Turbo, Sean, and you will not be able to accept <laughs> new things either. This you is just hilarious. Wait. I on any given week when I'm on this show, people go from being like, Sean's the most jaded person on earth. Cause <laughs> why is Sean not more jaded? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just swings so wild. Uh, Welcome to the internet. Next one. Uh, I'm excited about uh, that. I, you know, this one's a rumor for me. So, Hey, take it with a grain of salt, I suppose. But uh, I, I hear that that new Astro bot game is going to come I out later so. this year. I really mm, hope so please. as well. Um, please. I am also willing myself to get, my hopes up that it will be a full real video a game, real video game, which they haven't done with Astro so far, other than I guess the VR game, yeah. which also I think ha that's a caveat of its own. Um, right. There's always a caveat. Yes. I don't want a caveat anyway. Yeah. No, not at all. Uh, but a Astro rules. Uh, you know, they did. Uh, you know, Astro's Playroom as a launch thing with the PS5, and um, the game is so fucking good. Dude. So good. It's the great as a museum. So it's great as a good. fun game. It's it's great as yeah. the speed run game. Where I'm actually showing one of Mike Minotti's uh, speed runs from Mountain oh, Run here. That's what it um, says. Yes, and, and it's like simple where like there's not a ton of different mechanics and mm -hmm. yet it's just so satisfying and um you feel good moving around the world so that as a 3d platformer it just nails what it needs to nail and then it gives you a ton of fun stuff happening around you yeah really like that man mike you were 21st in the world when you did that one at one, at one um, point i was in the top 10 yeah. that was good. The, the best i got and then uh yeah i think by the end of it you you were you were better than me you did beat me at right. that point, I beat you, though. That was all I cared about. Right. Yeah, that's the name. Uh, right Astro's Playroom, Playroom Mountain Run Better Than Jeff Grubb is the name of the title. <laughs> 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 that's very good. Uh, Metroid Prime 2 Remaster. God, I hope mm. so. Yes. Uh, that. Like, Listen, why wouldn't they do that at this point? I just don't. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, you but know, there's a bunch of stuff with Nintendo is weird specifically because we're wondering, yeah. well, what is filling out this year? And we're expecting it to be kind of remakes and remasters well, yeah they did one remaster they have to be considering a second one right and they were considering yeah. for sure <laughs> uh they definitely uh, did consider it and it's like something that I've, I've heard was basically ready to go but it's nintendo they they have things that they put on their shelf and i maybe sometimes yeah. they don't pull them dead i actually i don't know like what is the energy required to like pull one of these projects down off the shelf and be like okay now it's ready to go and when i say shelf that's not like oh we've iced the project or and it's not in the works it's like no they finished it and they're waiting for the right time to put it out does it like require an effort at that point or is it literally the, a switch they can flip and be like now that is out and if it's not that maybe sometimes they were like oh well, we've changed our mind we're going to hold on to that for a little bit longer you, or something like that do yeah. you think that it even makes sense for them to well i've talked myself into it but i'll say it outside <laughs> um i was gonna say does it make sense if because i don't think metroid prime 4 is coming this year i think it comes next year mm -hmm. so do you it does it make sense for them to put it out at the end of or in the summer like drop it in the summer i don't know i'm just trying to think that like i feel like you launch the switch with metroid prime 4 it's the switch 2 with metroid prime 4 but then you, I wouldn't then put that game out in the fall and then give it three ish months, assuming like a spring release. I mean, for I, the I, think this, I think at this point you just put it out whenever, really. I don't so know. I'll drop the, it like the first one. 
Yeah, just you know? it just like yeah. fill in a gap on the schedule. Put it's, it out. Yeah, that's what's that's what's more about is that there are going to be some droughts here on the Switch, yeah. probably, and we got to yep. plug those holes. That's right. It's a Nintendo's a hole plugging company. That's their main that's thing. They over fill there. holes. Man, I forgot about this one. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater. I yeah, and what fucked me up is when I looked at a list preparing for this. Apparently, they're saying this is 2024. Right, they did. Like, right, wow. there, there was that trailer I thought where it just said 2024. Yeah, so, I, mean, I, that, I forgot about that. I just, I just have no idea what to really expect from 2024 Konami. Yeah, I like. Right. They, they have no. I have no reason to believe that this video game is going to be good. Right. Like, so, is, well, is, that's the thing. Is Silent Hill Two also this year. Jesus. Yes. They it. That's almost one of the controversy of this game is that's going to be so much of just the original game, new graphics, just the original game, Unreal yeah. Engine four slash five, whatever it may be. Maybe that's the move. If like you don't have like a really super strong development team to like go in there and try to yeah. reimagine things, uh, sure. Then just putting that layer over it does make sense in some ways, but. Like there are certain things like like the fight with um with with the end of the sniper guy. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that was a PS2 game. So it took place this big map, but it was three separate loading areas for that to work. Mm -hmm. Like, are they going to be able to like change that at least? Like, like there, there must be something yeah, there's got to yeah. change. Where's the line going to be? I. Yeah, I don't know. I also feel like I have gross feelings, I think, about them you doing this game without like i understand that konami owns metal gear solid but like yeah. i it feels gross that they're making this game a little bit to me um i don't know we'll see but revolver also does do cool spinny gun shit in this game <laughs> so, like, sure does. that yeah. part is I mean, pretty good you know i'm looking at the strip like yeah this looks good and man uh, snake eater is is one of the best games ever so I, there's no reason why this yeah. shouldn't be good but i still am just like i am skeptical for some reason uh, all right, so that does it for our most anticipated games that might come out. That leaves us with a handful of games in the uh, long shot, and I'm giggling at one of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who could say? Uh, for me, this is Metroid Prime 4. Uh, Metroid Prime yeah. 4 is a... Praying for you. Thank you. It is a JPEG, and that's it. Like, we've only yeah. ever yeah. seen... And that was a JPEG that got rebooted, <laughs> and they started development yeah, over on it. We saw that JPEG in 2017, I think. And then they restarted development. Yes. I think it was a full five years ago now uh, when they restarted development. Um, mm -hmm. So that you know, that's almost enough time to put out a, a game, two games, almost enough mm -hmm. time to do that. And they haven't put out one yet. Um, that means it's going to be twice mm -hmm. as big. That's my hope. <laughs> uh, I, the, the reason I think this makes sense is I think it's a game they announced as a Switch game, so I think part of them is like we have to put it out as a, a Switch game. That doesn't mean it can't be cross-gen uh, cross and stuff like that. And yeah. and I think it's it probably is getting pretty close to being ready. Um, mm hmm yeah. But it's Nintendo, I, I, and I, I think the the final point there is like, hey, Switch Two launch game. I get that Metroid does not play for them in that way. I don't think that doesn't mean it can't do like do something for them. But Metroid just doesn't sell in the way that they would want it to. I think for it to be well, a, no, but a wait, straight up you launch. Game. But it's like as like a one two because what because Mario came out. Zelda launched with it, right? And then Mario mm -hmm. came out a couple of weeks later. A couple months, no, yeah. it came out no. a good deal later. But oh, the, the first year, year though, it was October. oh, it was the end of the year. It was oh, okay, so like, you, I, that's like six yeah. months. Yeah, yeah, but this doesn't need to be the launch game. That's going to be the Mario game. No. I still think ha you having a Metroid Prime Four is a very good thing for your launch lineup, and I think that helps Why? you a lot. Uh yeah, you know, I, you know, I, I no, 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 we're hashing this but, out. Why? Yeah, well, why, yeah, why is it a good why, launch? Why game? is it a good launch game? Uh, because it, people like Metroid, and people, a lot of people no, who like don't. Metroid. <laughs> oh, oh my God! Oh, I'll just go. The game doesn't sell more than five million copies. What? It doesn't matter at all. It doesn't sell more than two million copies, Michael. It it, it it will sell two million copies, and that's good. I yeah. so I think for Nintendo the way they would look at it is the last time they did that. Now to be fair, it was Metroid Prime Hunters. The last time they did that, it was the DS, and that was a kind of a, a little bit of a, a a tough launch for them, where it wasn't as mm -hmm. popular right away. And Metroid didn't do them any favors when they launched that device. So I think I don't know. Also it, I thought that. the DS had a good launch. The 3DS had the 3DS had a, had a d d disastrous launch, but the, I think right. the DS had a slow start. Uh, no, like, Nintendo always does. They always have light launches. It's like the Switch and did not have a good launch at a good yeah. launch year. 
There, there was mm. no Metroid launch game on the DS. It came with the demo for Metroid. Oh, was it Metro yeah. Prime? When did Metro Prime Hunters come out then? It was like a year later. It was a like year, a year later. later. Jesus. Okay, yeah. so I am thinking of the demo then. But uh, also, launch I played that demo a lot. Yeah, I played the demo so much that it did feel like the game to me, yes. Um, I mean, I, I guess I, my point is like, yeah, not, you know, you need launch games that aren't just the ones that are going to sell 12, 20 million copies, right? Like, otherwise, they would just release Mario and nothing else. You do have yeah. to have other marquee things. You have but to have But that's historically stable. what they do, they is my a, point. You, I mean, th there are other things in that launch window, like an ARMS or, uh, you know, Mario Kart. Obviously, that's a very big deal. Well, I or, guess you know, what Splatoon are you defining as launch? Or one, like, two, literally switch, the launch or snipper of the clips or things. Uh, but yeah, even literally the launch of the system, there are other things than just one okay. big game, usually. But yeah, I'm just saying, I don't think there's a big marquee game, but I, I don't think, think it's the I don't think it launches with the system. Because I just don't think that makes sense for how they see Metroid. But, you know, we love Metroid. All We all love Metroid. It's a phenomenal series. Nintendo doesn't give a flying fuck about Metroid at all whatsoever. And so I think they, but they know that. They are aware that they're like, yeah, whatever, it's this little thing. And so I do think they're going to maximize it, which is why I'm like, it doesn't have it to do anything with the Switch 2. And mm -hmm. obviously this is just speculation, but when it is speculation, I think you need to look at patterns. And the pattern is that they would release this on the Switch 1, and then maybe there's an update later because we don't know how they're handling Switch games on Switch 2. But we already have a relatively recent example of this with Samus Returns, 3DS game in the launch year of the Switch. And I just I, I don't see them changing their plans, which, as we know, is what we know right now is this is a Switch 1 game. We don't know anything to the contrary. I just don't see them deviating and adding more work I think if the, the, necessary the, to the get difference there is if it's not ready, if it's not ready and it's like it's going to take like a full other year of development, then yeah. I think they would, would probably be like, OK, let's put I mean, I know with Samus yeah. Returns uh, that they uh, put it on the, the 3DS uh, despite the switch being right there. But I think yeah. they also learned some lessons from those games where like those games didn't sell very right. well. All the games in that window. Not too good. Yeah. yeah, that's why I'm adamant about the patterns. But ultimately, this is one this game, Devil's Advocate. We don't know if this game releases. <laughs> the right. game could be vaporware. But, you know, just we is such a big question mark of what the Switch 2 is going to be and how they handle backwards compatibility. So I don't know. We'll see. I guess I will see Metro Prime 4 is kind of being like the red steel, right? They're going to want to have one game that's like, hey, yeah. look, also our, our system is pretty, or the Metroid Prime 3 even, right? Because Metroid Prime 3 did launch in, it's not pure launch, it was launch window on the no, Wii. No, it was 2007. Like, 2007 yeah so like it was around yeah, so there. it was it was like or was it eight yeah it was like a year or two later it was a decent amount later yeah, well, I don't, but I don't think it was from that perspective though mike wouldn't you then put out i think sean has convinced me because wouldn't you <laughs> then put out uh the metroid prime 2 remaster and have that be as shiny and glossy as possible no because they're not gonna it... put that much into uh, metroid yeah prime the, the metroid yeah. prime 2 and yeah. 3 are probably gonna be a little bit less glossy than metroid yeah, prime 1 was from the little we've heard about that right exactly. wise, it's gonna yeah. be a lot simpler than uh yeah. well, it, it came out like a year later it was uh like august 2007 yeah, Metro Prime 3. So yeah, I was like, I don't, I don't know. man, I don't. I mean, honestly, it's not even necessarily about it being a launch title or not for the Switch 2. It's just, but I do think it's a Switch 2 game. That's sure. it. I don't know. I know. Comes I know. <laughs> things and things could just work out that way for sure. Yeah. Um, we'll uh, but maybe, maybe still Switch this year. I listen. If that was their big game this holiday. I think that makes a ton of sense. I actually think that makes the most sense more than having it be a Switch 2 launch game, which I know that's the main point yeah, you disagree with, Mike. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, uh, we're crossing that one off. Final Fantasy IX Remake. Do you think there's a chance that comes out this year? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> uh, so it's a long shot. Did yeah, they already, they shot. already do a Final Fantasy this year? If that, uh, that just never stopped them before. Oh, they, well, they did one, and we're getting an expansion for 14. Yeah, lots of Final Fantasies already. But, um, you know, there's... I guess the only reason I have some hope is because Yoshi P, when talking about Dawn Trail and all the Final Fantasy IX references, being like, there's a reason for that that I can't say. And I think maybe that's being overblown. It, the reason could just be because of some plot point in that expansion. That's possible. But maybe it's because the Final Fantasy IX remake is much sooner than we're expecting. Who knows? Um, and then what does that look like to you, Final Fantasy IX remake? How, how, how ambitious? I think it's... I think it's Probably more like what I am expecting for, say, Metal Gear Solid Delta. I think it is more mm. of a mm. graphical update with some nice quality of life stuff. And hopefully some things expanded. 
one of the problems with nine is that a lot of the uh, kind of party members plot lines get really diminished and they don't have a whole lot to do as the last half or even third of the game really just becomes super Zidane focused. So that would be nice. But I don't think it's not going to be like remake or seven remake, right? Where it's like a different combat engine. They took like the first like city of the game and turned that into a game all its own. No, it won't be yeah. like that. This it'll, will be one It'll be like title. Crisis Core. It'll be like that Crisis Core remake. It'll, be, no, it'll be more no. than that. It'll be a lot more than but, that. But, but, so the, how, how would it be more? Right, that Crisis Core remake is just like every, all the graphic assets are swapped out. You think it'll yeah. be... Well, that's what well. you're saying, though. More like Persona 3 Reload, where they actually okay, add stuff okay. and do All quality right. of life. Even, stuff. even then, like, yeah, they, they updated the graphics of the game, but it's not like they made it look like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, right? They made it a game that's going to run the Switch. Uh, still. I, it kind of looks a lot. Close. It looks pretty close to the remake. <laughs> no, it's pretty good. Yeah, it yeah. Like, literally uses some models and stuff. It, it uses the same me, models. I don't think Final Fantasy IX Remake will run on Switch 1. How about that? Okay. Yeah, I'm that Switch to exclusive. He's saying yeah, it. He said Launch it right there. title, Mike. Launch title. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm, you guys are not ready for the gloating. I'm gonna. <laughs> oh no, we we never <laughs> are, man. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> will never be able to prepare myself for that. Um. <laughs> all right, and then finally, uh, someone wrote down here, Ridge Racer. Yeah, I mean, I you know used to not have any hope for this, but Jeff, you've been doing, you've been talking about this so much, and been doing. So much research into what's going on with the future of Ridge Racer. Maybe you could tell us right now if we should bump this up to game that might be coming out instead of anticipated long shot. I think long shot is the right category for it, and that's yeah. the, that's the reason one of the reasons I'm so tired. Clearly, I'm, I'm in a, a parking garage, just meeting with sources, yeah. a lot of deep throats uh, who are out mm-hmm. there finding out about Ridge Racer farming. Don't you worry about about that. Uh, the Ridge Racer deep throats are very informative. Um, but listen, when I have something to say, you'll be the first to know. Okay, I appreciate that. Yeah, of course. Ah, all right. Um, anything else? Any games that we forgot? Chad, you want to throw anything else out while we start wrapping up? Uh, but I guess then overall, like, how are y'all feeling about the end of the year? Because uh, right th- with this list, I'm like, that's decent. That's enough for me. Yeah, yeah it the, should be fine. The first part of this year has been so crazy already, legitimately and actually, that, like, I feel like it'll, whatever comes out, like that Eldering DLC, we didn't even talk about that. Um, yeah, God, that's right. About SMT uh, Five Vengeance. Yeah, having, like there's st- cool. there's still so much stuff. Um, I think it will continue to be a good year for yeah uh, I, video games coming out but not getting made. You know, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Chronicles is happening. Sure, that's true. Uh, that's that's, that's, that's Creed Red is probably this fall. I think it's one of those financial quarter things, so it might be early 2025. Also, not sure. Sure. Uh, I don't know what to expect from Homeworld Three. I wonder if they're like going to come back and like it's going to be like great or if it's like a disappointment doesn't hit like it used to. I don't know. Yep. It could go either way for me. I really don't know as well. Um, and then, uh, of course, it's a uh, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. That's all anyone's talking about. Um, yeah. Is down it time on this for another Mario hmm. Party? No. Uh, the- Probably in a world where they released four of them for the GameCube. Over yeah, but we're like not in that world anymore. We're, we're in not the, we're, in that world anymore. We're in the world where they yeah. released one game per franchise, but then they did two Mario well, parties no, on the Switch. Because they had the retro throwback one, which the was way better. Yeah. Than yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, one. the Switch is yeah. such a long lifespan that theoretically yeah. they could, yeah, just pop one of those out later in the year. That probably won't be as good as Superstars. All wow. right, I think with that in mind, it's time to wrap this up. Uh, I can probably hit that button. Um, but oh, hey, any plans for the weekend? Anyone have anything fun happening? No, yes, um, that's us at the beginning of the show. We ignored you then. Well, okay, I'm moving. I, huh. <laughs> so I don't remember asking you plans fun, for the weekend. But I am moving. Oh, where are you moving? My address what? is yeah, what's the address? 1600. <laughs> Wait, just, to be, just to be safe. Can you give us your security? Uh, my social security, security number? number for yeah. sure. Funny it numbers on back here. Correctly. Nine, eight. Um, yeah, no, I uh, am moving. So that's, that's my... exciting. Or is it because I hate moving? <laughs> I hate moving. Oh, I'm amped to be moving, dreading mm-hmm. the move. I haven't yeah. seen the totality of the things that I own since mm-hmm. November of 2022. So, like, because it's just been in the storage cube that is going yeah. to get dropped off at my new place. So I'm like, I just can't believe you're moving to Ohio with us finally. I know, I'm really amped. Yeah, I'm excited to be in the path of totality. Uh, That's going to be... Oh, some bad news. news. Yeah. What? Hello? Uh, (laughs) All right, well, you all keep living in your own path of totality. We're going to get out of here. More giant bomb stuff on the website, on YouTube. Uh, We'll have plenty of stuff next week. 
look out for it then. Until then, though, everyone have a good one. Take care of yourself, and goodbye. Music's playing, don't worry.